Hi, I'm Dr. Arthur Bradley, and today I'm going to talk to you about a new product I just developed. I'm really excited about it. It's part of this DEF CON uh, series that we've developed. This particular one is a vehicle EMP protection system. Uh, this model has uh, shorter wires, of course, than the final unit, which will have several feet of wire that you can attach to your vehicle's battery. But the idea of it is um, you attach it across your car battery and it provides uh, really a lot of transient protection uh, to surge away unwanted energy from, let's say, a nuclear electromagnetic pulse or a nearby lightning strike or really any other source of transient energy. So it helps protect your vehicle's system. Uh, it's it's meant to be added um, with the current auto protection system. It's a supplemental product. It's a really heavy duty one. Um, but so we have several products already, as you probably know, we have the trap, which goes in the cigarette lighter receptacles. We have the trap B, which is a small, very, very fast product that goes across the battery. And we have some ferrites that go around the main battery wires. And those are all very important. They do a good job of protecting your vehicle. This is a like ultra heavy duty surge protector that goes across the battery as well to provide uh, even more protection. It's, uh, it's sort of a compromise between speed and power. The Trap B is a really, really fast device, but doesn't have the energy absorption of something like this auto protection system here. So it's a, it's a really unique product. It's very high quality. Uh, you'll know that as soon as you get one, it's just a well-made product. It'll come with installation instructions, but it's simple enough. You hook it across your battery and you mount it somewhere under the hood. Um, so I just wanted to answer a few questions people might have, tell you a little bit about the product, kind of highlight it. Again, I'm really super excited about it. I developed it like I did the trap products. Um, so let me just answer some questions people have already sent in about it. So one of the main questions, what's the difference between this and the trap products and why do I need this? The short answer is, again, this is much heavier duty than let's say like the Trap B product. Um, just for comparing them, the Trap or the Trap B both absorb about five joules of energy. And I go through a video where I talk about why that number is okay. This product develop, uh, absorbs about 2000 joules of energy. So about 400 times as much it has the ability to absorb. So much heavier duty uh, components inside. Correspondingly, the surge current through a trap, um, the transient surge current that it can take is around 95 amps, which is quite a lot of current. Um, but through this one, it's on the order of 270,000 amps, depending on the different paths that the current went. Now, obviously, you can't take 270,000 amps through wires, you know, that are 10 gauge, even though these are really great uh, automotive grade wires. You can't take 270,000 amps through it for very long. So these are transient currents. We're talking about microseconds of time that that energy gets dissipated. Any steady state current of those kind of currents would, of course, just sever wires and so forth. So 270,000 amps, though, is a whole lot of current, uh, even if it's just transient brief current that gets shunted away. So it's a great deal of protection. Um, the technology that's in it is slightly different, and we did that intentionally. In the, in the uh, trap products, we use TVS diodes, transient voltage suppression diodes, and I talk about those. And the reason you want to use those is they're super, super fast, like they turn on in about a picosecond, a little bit less than a picosecond even. So the only thing limiting their speed is really the way you connect them. Um, the technology in here is uh, metal oxide varistor technology, really heavy duty. They take much more current through them, but they're slightly slower to turn on. Now they still turn on in under a nanosecond, which is fast enough for an EMP, but it's not the same speed as let's say the trap. So they work very well in combination where one turns on slightly, and I mean slightly, uh, hundreds of picoseconds before the other one starts to shun away the fastest energy and then this kicks on and shunts other energy away. So a great supplemental turn on technology. Um, the other thing is a lot of people ask about, hey, you know, we put these traps in, but I don't really have any indication to know that they're not damaged or that they're still functioning. So on this auto protection system, we did put an, a green LED. Of course, it's going to be under the hood, so you're not going to see it most of the time. But if you want to see it when you first connect it or if you're wondering later and you open the hood, it's a very bright, um, illuminating green LED. You can't miss it. If it's on, you know it's on. Um, and of course, people want to know, well, mm, is that going to drain my battery? And I added in some special circuitry to limit that current draw. So it only draws about 9 milliamps of current, which is really, really small, considering most batteries are about 55 amps or 55,000 milliamps. So it would take months of time of it sitting on your car, just idle in a driveway to have any noticeable effect on your battery. So it shouldn't affect battery life and it'll give you an indication uh, that the unit is active and alive. Um, installation, uh, easy enough, like I said, there's gonna be a, a hot wire, there's gonna be a, a black wire for the ground of the battery or the negative of the battery. Then there's gonna be a green for the chassis connection. Again, these wires will be much longer in the actual unit, this is just a model. 
Um, so they'll just attach. You'll attach them to the, the same way that you do the Trap B, except you'll also have a, uh, a chassis connection for this one to shunt away energy. All right, so that's the basic facts about the unit. Um, some questions that people sent in that I think might be helpful. Um, will it protect against an EMP? Well, will anything protect against an EMP? It's all about buying down risk, okay? No matter what anybody tells you, nobody's really tested it with a nuclear EMP, so they don't know for certain. What you know for certain is that if you have protection on a system, you have a much better chance of a piece of equipment surviving. If you have something shielded in a box, it has a much better chance of surviving than without being shielded or protected. So that's what we can say, is that it provides protection. There are no guarantees with EMP, just like with lightning. You can offer guarantees if you want, but if a device takes a direct lightning strike, it will not survive, all right? There's just too much energy through it, it will not survive. Now, a nearby lightning strike, which is much more common than a direct lightning strike, transient protection devices like the auto one here do a great job of shunting away that energy that gets coupled into the cabling, all right? So it can help protect against lightning. It definitely can help protect against an EMP. That's what it's designed for. Um, what about a solar event, a solar coronal mass ejection? Well, solar coronal mass ejections generally don't couple energy into small electronics. Even cars are considered small electronics. So typically a solar CME really wouldn't have any effect on a car anyway, but let's say it did. Let's say there's some energy in that CME that manages to couple into the wiring of the car. This would also help protect against that as well. All right. Okay. Let's see what other questions people have here. I was wanting to make sure I addressed them all. Um, yeah, I already talked about what the indicator light means. Um, so is it reusable? Like let's say there's an EMP event and many people are worried about this, it. a reasonable concern. You have an EMP event, which damages a lot of stuff. People who have protected systems then take those systems out of protection and use them and the enemy deploys a second EMP to try and damage it. So the question is, would the unit survive and continue to provide protection after an EMP? And the answer is yes, this unit would not be damaged by an EMP. I can say that with confidence. There's just not enough energy uh, that would be coupled into the wires of the vehicle to damage these extremely powerful uh, metal oxide varistors that are inside here. So it could take multiple EMPs and wouldn't be damaged. Now I should point out that the traps, even though they're small, they also would not be damaged by multiple EMPs. You could have an EMP followed by another one five minutes later and the trap would also survive that. Um, so that's, that's the kind of questions people were asking. Um, I wanted to make sure I, I answered those questions. I'm sure there are going to be more, so you can paste them down below in the YouTube video. I'm, I'll do my best to try and answer them. You can also just send me an email and I'll try and answer them. But again, this is, uh, this is one of the new products that we're coming out with. Um, you know, they set me loose in the sense of uh, I'm trying to develop interesting, highly effective new products. And my expertise, as many people know, I'm an electrical engineer, about 30 years of experience. I have a PhD in engineering, so pretty much know what I'm doing in it. Um, and, and so they sort of said, hey, develop some cool and interesting products. And that's what I'm doing. So the first one, I think, was the, the traps and the EMP alert product came out. And now we've got this uh, auto protection system as part of the DEF CON line. And there are some more coming that are also very exciting. Okay, so I encourage people to just keep an eye on the new products that come out and see if they might fit your needs. And again, if you have any questions, please feel free to send them to me. I'm happy to answer them. Uh, and again, thank you very much for your time.